Hello everyone. I think that right now is the perfect time to bring up this topic and educate you all on something really important that not a lot of people know the details of it and it's actually really interesting and important to know. So I would like to talk about, I have a slideshow here but it's kind of hard to see. Um, today I'm going to be talking to you all about the evolution of nursing, what it's been um, from prehistoric America to the mid-1900s. So I'm just going to follow along to this PowerPoint I made and tell you everything about, tell, tell you everything that you need to know about nursing. So um, research proves that throughout the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries, um, the efforts put forth, put forth by nurses have really shaped the importance of the occupation to what it is today. Um, many aspects of life during all of these time periods led to the various innovations for healthcare that we see today. Um, basically, the early beginnings of patient care were very informal. Um, people were born at home and died at home and were taken care of by their families. There was no nurse, there was no, no medical professionals that you went to for care. Um, basically, any medical knowledge was passed down through generations and that's the best knowledge that your family had was how you were taken care of. Um, trained doctors were rare in early America, and women primarily always had the essential role, so go women. And they also served as midwives to deliver babies. Um, intro to nursing. In early colonial America, the local government would establish institutions to care for the sick that had no family to care for them, so that's kind of how the whole profession of nursing came about when families were not there to take care of people. Um, as years passed, they called these houses alms houses where people would go that didn't have the family um, for people to go volunteer their time to take care of these sick people. Um, and as the numbers of these alms houses, like the patients increased, the need for caregivers did too. Um, nurses did not have degrees for the simple fact that there was no formal training. Um, until the mid 19th century, uh, but entering the 18th century, there was more in depth and formal patient care being discovered and put forward. Um, through the 18th century and including the Revolutionary War, uh, war nurses were recruited by Congress to attend to the sick and injured under the command of George Washington. The assignment was one nurse to every 10 patients, which is a lot. Um, I actually work in the hospitals and I'm not a nurse, but the patients that I do have when I have 10 or more patients, it's very overwhelming. Um, so I can imagine, especially during a war time, that would have been extremely challenging. Um, male doctors were paid $40 per month and nurses, but uh, female nurses were just given $2 per month which was eventually raised to $8 to encourage more nurses to volunteer. Obviously at that time men were valued more than women, um, which we'll see over time that that was not, that should have not been the case. Um, other advancements were the Free African Society. It was created to benefit free African Americans and recruited them um, to provide nursing care for the white citizens that were sick. Um, there was the Marine Hospital Service, which hospitals were built along the coast and seaways that funded um, the, the merchant seamen that were ill. And then um, the Public Health Service screened new started to screen new immigrants for illnesses that could be studied and um, watched. Basically, the importance of nurses, which I just wanted to put in there, um, to talk about is that women started gaining experience and knowledge and really set the stage for expanding the career and, you know, standard, standardizing the career. Um, nurses were constantly faced with dangers such as new diseases that were emerging, which is something that we're facing right now, very scarily. scarily. Um, surgeons perform most of the skilled medical duties, uh, while female nurses did patient care but they also did so much more things which still happens today such as um, you know bathing patients feeding cleaning hospital wards cooking so much um, change linen sweep 
disinfect the hospitals, combed hair, all of patient care. It's not just giving meds, it's everything. Um, formal nursing began to emerge after the end of the 18th century. Medical schools and structured medical training began to develop. Um, the Ladies Benevolent Society is the first known effort of like organized home care nursing. Um, and the primary recipients of the care were free blacks and poor whites. The Nurse Society um, was also something that emerged and it trained working women in the care of new mother and infant. So it was like a mother baby um, care type of thing. Um, and then the Women's Hospital of Philadelphia was the first um, organization of like a nursing school where it was a six month course in nursing and it was under the direction of, of a physician but it was very well known at the time and it awarded its first diploma in 1869 and is considered the first state chartered school for nurses in the US which is pretty cool. Going into the 19th century um, we have Dortha Dix which she was appointed to superintend female nurses for the Union Army during the Civil War um, she was really important in that fight. Um, the New England Hospital for Women and Children opened a school for nurses with a one-year curriculum, so it, it began getting a little bit more formal and challenging. Um, the Women's Branch of New York Mission and Tract Society starts sending the first of its trained nurses into homes to care for the sick, so home care nursing was becoming more widely accepted and popular, too. Um, I have a few important nurses in here, but I'll just talk about one. Um, for time's sake, but the most important nurse in history is definitely Florence Nightingale. You've probably heard of her. She's known as the Lady with the Lamp. Um, it was given to her for her frequent checkups on the wounded soldiers throughout the night. Um, she was the first nurse to care for her patients, um, genuinely care for her patients and not just for their sickness or trying to figure out what was wrong with them. She actually cared to comfort them too, which is an important part of nursing. Um, Nightingale began improving hospital hygiene and sanitation. She was the one who really made the connection between hand sanitiz sanitization and disease and how important it is to wash your hands before contact with each patient. Um, and she was the first to record her findings of that and she voiced her opinion in nursing practice and really made the, the change and the notice of that. Um, like I said, she had a huge impact. They created Nightingale schools that were nursing schools based on her her teachings. Um, yeah, and yeah, so she, by 1900, somewhere between 400 to 800 schools of nursing were in operation in the country based off of Florence Nightingale. So she did have a big impact. There's also Mary Adelaide Nutting, a key figure in modernizing the nursing profession. Her work is still influential in the field today. Um, oh, and then getting to nursing accreditation. The 20th century was really kicked off um, in North Carolina. They passed the first Nurse Registration Act. Um, and shortly after, New York, New Jersey, Virginia followed. Professional nurse leaders believed that nurse registration acts would legitim legitimatize the profession um, in the eyes of the public, raise the quality of professional nurses, and improve educational standards in schools of nursing. Um, just a few notable things that happened in the 1900s as well. Um, the Committee of Nursing in 1917 was organized by a voluntary body of American nursing leaders um, who then received official federal government standing, which was important movement for nurses. Uh, World War I, 20, almost 22, only, almost, tw sorry, almost 23,000 nurses served in the military, um, enrolled in the, the nurse corps of the Army, Navy, and Red Cross. Um, we had a lot of nurses, important nurses that survived the influenza influenza pandemic and, and saved a lot of lives there and helped with the effort against it and World War II we moved up to almost 80,000 nurses serving in the military about a quarter of the registered nurse population put their effort in there so that's really inspiring too 
Um, basically, as exploring the information throughout the slides, it is undeniable that nursing has made remarkable advancements through all of the centuries since it w first became a thing. The evolution of this amazing occupation and its improvements can be tagged to the hardworking caregivers that came before us, and they still exist today. And I do feel like this is a perfect time to talk about the importance of nurses when we're suff like our world is suffering um, a global pandemic right now. So my challenge to you guys is to hopefully you you remember some of these awesome facts that I shared with you and you can reach out to a nurse and just thank them for their hard work. That goes a long way. Thank you for listening.